everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jackie and I'm a self-taught software engineer based in London and I currently work at Amazon Prime Video. Today's video is kind of another vlog of like a day in my life as a software engineer and I thought this time we could talk a bit about books. I genuinely love reading. I think I started reading when I was about eight years old and kind of never really lost the habit. However, I feel like for the past year I haven't been reading as much as I used to. And I think I kind of started missing feeling more inspired and motivated through books. So I made the conscious decision to go back to reading more. Now I try to read every day before going to bed and in the mornings a bit as well, around 20 minutes. In this video, I wanted to share with you the books that I feel like had the biggest impact in my life and what that impact was as well. Today is Monday, it's currently 11.30 a.m. So far it's been quite a productive day, which is good, so I'm gonna go back to work. I already had stand-up, uh, it's the only meeting I have today, which is amazing. So I was just reading the documentation for an AWS service. It was talking about how it uses a columnar storage file. And I remember doing research and reading and taking notes about columnar versus row storage. I just have like this notebook where I have a lot of notes on system design, scalability, distributed systems in general, a few examples of like how to design certain systems. I use this to learn system design in general and then also to prepare for interviews. It's pretty cool to have a full notebook with your own notes. So I had lunch and I'm really in the mood for like a yummy coffee so I think I'm gonna go uh, grab one from my local coffee shop but I'm gonna change into some pants because it's kind of cold outside. It's currently a bit past 6 p.m. I finished work around 6. I'm actually craving some cereal. I think I'm gonna eat some cereal downstairs. I created a few notes about the books that I wanted to share with you today, so I'm just gonna go over them after I eat something and then we are gonna sit down and talk about books. My phone just ran out of battery and I had to get a charger. Like, this is my current situation. I can barely move my chair because it barely fits into this spot. Okay, let's do this. So I thought for this part of the video, I would share with you some of the books that I feel like made the biggest impact in my life so far. As I mentioned already, uh, I do like reading a lot. So the first book is a classic. It's How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. This is quite an old book. I think it was written almost a century ago, uh, but it's still pretty relevant today. I saw some reviews online of people who didn't enjoy the book because they saw it as manipulative. I don't personally agree with that. Um, I don't think that the book is manipulative, but I can understand why some people would interpret it that way and I think in part is because it has the word friends in the title. This book is not about making that type of close friends. This book is rather about acquaintances and networking and people you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis just because you are living in society. This book focuses on social interaction and kind of how to deal with people, sometimes difficult people. And it also highlights things that we sometimes unconsciously do or say that might hurt or annoy other people without us even realizing. Honestly, the main reason that I enjoyed this book and I put this on the list, it's because no matter what your background is or your job or what you do in life, there will come a point where you need to sell yourself or you need to convince someone of something or you need to influence people in a certain direction and this book really helps you with that. This book has really helped me in two things, becoming a better listener and being more aware of how my words might be interpreted by someone else. Overall, this book really helped me in interviews and in networking, getting along with colleagues and work projects and kind of everything in between. It's a really good book about how to be social. 
So the next book on the list is The Little Book of Common Sense Investing by John Bogle. So the main concept of the book is that for the average person, it makes more sense financially to dollar cost average into a diversified index fund and to hold this index fund until retirement than it is to pick stocks individually and invest into them individually or try to time the market. I know that there are so many books out there that say exactly the same thing. There's a lot of research in the area that points towards the same direction. What I really liked about this book is that the author went above and beyond to include data that backs the main concept of the book. The book goes into great detail to show and justify why low-cost index funds are a very viable investment option and it did convince me and the reason why I decided to include this book here is first of all because it does include all of the numbers and the facts and second of all because it made me personally more comfortable with the idea of investing larger amounts of money. So before reading this book, I wanted to start investing, but I felt really scared. Obviously, no one can predict the stock market, no one can predict the future, no one knows what might happen, but it just made me feel reassured. The next book in line is The Magic of Thinking Big by David G. Schwartz. This is a book about mindset and about positivity. Now, as cheesy as this may sound, it is a really good book. Uh, it was written in the 50s, I think, but it's still pretty accurate today. Like, it's just a timeless piece of literature. It was the first book that I read of this type, which highlighted how important it is for our thoughts and our mind to be positive in order for us to attract positive things into our lives. It's not really a book about the law of attraction, uh, but it does kind of link into it. The book speaks a lot about the small things that we do every day and the impact that they can have on ourselves and in our success and our life in general and how we should be careful to speak to ourselves the right way. Since it was the first time that I was faced with these concepts, when I finished the book I just felt so so inspired and I just feel like this book was a bit of a stepping stone for me. I think I had these dreams or these desires in my head of things that I wanted to achieve but I never truly believed in myself or believed that I could be the type of person to achieve these things. As silly as it might sound, I think one of the biggest outcomes from this book was that I realized I don't need to have an IQ of 1000 to achieve certain things as long as I really really believed in myself and I did the work and I put in the time. So it's definitely a good read if you sometimes struggle with believing in yourself or having a positive mindset or talking highly of yourself in your own head. And finally, the last book on the list is The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. The book in itself focuses on 12 core financial lessons that the author explores by giving examples from the real world. And it's actually really interesting because a few of these are straightforward, but others are things that I personally just had never really thought about that much. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail into each lesson because I do want you guys to go and read the book. I personally really liked it because it made me reflect and it touches on a few questions that are interesting to think about and I hadn't reflected that much on them. For example, how much money would be enough for you personally? How much of an influence does luck have in people's successes? And for example, why is it that some people who are extremely wealthy risk everything they have in pursuit of more wealth even though they already have more than enough? The book also touches on greed, on what's actually that we're after when we are in the pursuit of making money. It also highlights how important it is to leave room for error in our financial planning. I actually just finished reading this book in particular and the reason I'm including it here is because it was the first book that I read which went through the entire kind of life cycle of money. I think a lot of books focus on how to make more money. A lot of them also focus on how to spend less money and how to budget. But this one was the first book that really talked about earning money, spending money, and how to keep your money. If you feel like you read a few books on personal finance and you kind of covered the basics, I would really recommend this as a follow-up read. And these are all the books that I had to share with you today. Let me know if you enjoyed and if you'd like to see more book content on the channel. If you have any good recommendations, please leave them in the comments. I was just here in my bed doing a to-do list for tomorrow.
It's currently 9 p.m. I'm now gonna take a shower, eat dinner, and probably just go to bed. If you enjoyed the video, please leave it a like and subscribe, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!